Little did the snickering hostesses know that Aiden and Miller were not the only people they should have been worried about. Miller, I'll give you three seconds, Aiden said quietly. None of the security guards knew what he was talking about at all. But Miller immediately understood Aiden's order and growled hungrily. Nah, one is enough for me. He had been learning and working on his combat skills, but he had never had anyone to practice on. This was going to be a treat. These men were practically begging to be punching bags. Miller's face suddenly became very serious. A savage and domineering look broke across his face. All five security guards opposite him suddenly got the same feeling of danger. A hesitancy bloomed in their eyes. Shudders began in their souls and spread down their spines. Be careful, one started. But before he was able to warn his brothers, he was sent flying backwards. Oh God! Miller had hit him with the strength of ten men. The rest of the security guards scrambled, but couldn't overcome their fear before they, too, were flying in all directions. Miller's fist swept all five people in a flash, leaving them with broken flesh and cracked bones. They were all unconscious before they even hit the ground. When Miller turned back to Aiden, there were five security guards motionless on the ground, and another group of guards hugging each other in terror, unable to escape. They knew they certainly couldn't rival this man's power no matter how hard they tried. Was this man a steel gorilla in human skin? In a strange silence, Aiden gave a half smile. What were you all saying? To Aiden, Miller was simply a knight knocking over a line of pawns. Exerting so much energy on such worthless people almost seemed wasteful, and this was most certainly Miller holding back somewhat. I'm sorry, I guess I went a bit too hard. Miller scratched his head and laughed awkwardly. He was excited to learn Aiden's combat skills, and even more excited to use them in real life. He had insisted on starting by learning the eight-form boxing techniques, which was by far the hardest to master. Antsy to practice, he had unleashed some of those forms on the helpless security guards, in spite of the fact that a few basic punches likely would have been all he would have needed. They were trained in basic combat. What were they against Miller, who had been trained by Aiden himself? Indeed, they had all gone down in a matter of seconds and with a single blow. Aiden shook his head with a snort. He turned to the hostesses. You should call an ambulance for them. They've definitely got some pretty bad internal injuries, but if you're quick, it won't be fatal. The greeters were already scared, but that sentence made them even more terrified. Aiden and Miller, meanwhile, swaggered right through the doors to the club. No one bothered to try and stop them. Only when Aiden and Miller had completely disappeared did the greeters move to call emergency services for the injured security guards. One guard began to recover for a moment, seemingly slightly less injured than the others. Go, go and tell the boss, he muttered, his head tilted back, and he passed out once again. The ladies did not hesitate to disobey, and several of them ran off into the club. The decoration style of nightlife was different than Aiden imagined. A large circular stage occupied half of the hall on the first floor. A large group of people were on the dance floor, dancing to the thumping beat. A long bar lined almost the entire wall in a U-shape. In front of the bar, customers who didn't like to dance or wanted to relax were sitting on bar stools and sipping oddly colored drinks. Uniformed bartenders made cocktails for guests behind the bar. On the west side of the hall, a winding staircase connected to the second floor. The second floor, which wrapped like a balcony above the first floor dance floor, was wall-to-wall -wall one way glass, meaning that people on the first floor couldn't see the second floor, but people on the second floor could look down and see the dance floor. Aiden decided to collect information from the first floor. He took Miller with him. Unsure of where to start, he just moved to a nearby customer drinking at a bar. But Aiden had forgotten about Miller's deterrent power. The first person Aiden approached was a sexy woman in head-to-toe leather clearly heavily drunk and sipping from an enormous cocktail. On her side was a tall, thin man with golden hair. He was rubbing his wandering hand up and down her arm predatorially. But as Aiden and Miller approached, the man's expression changed. He pulled his hand back and shifted uncomfortably. And it was not just him. At the moment when Miller approached, all the men nearby with devious intentions pulled away and reconsidered their plans. It seemed that the security guards were right. Miller really did scare the customers of the club. Aiden, however, didn't know that Miller's very presence had prevented several crimes from being committed. He came up to the woman in leather and handed her a picture of Matt. Have you seen this man recently? The woman gave a big wine burp, stared blankly at the picture and then looked away. No, he's not handsome as all. 
Not as handsome as you, cutie. The woman grinned and waggled her head at Aiden. Come on, have a drink with me. Aiden smelled an intense blend of alcohol on her breath. He reached out a finger and flicked her forehead. Triggering basic finger strength. It was a single flick, but Aiden was strong and the woman was very drunk. Her eyes rolled, her head lolled back, and she passed out. Aiden shook his head and scolded himself. How could he be so stupid as to question an alcoholic? He turned instead to the bartenders next. Working here, they should have noticed if Matt was a regular. But as Aiden questioned bartender after bartender, no one seemed to recognize Matt at all. While Aiden struck out time and time again, Frank was sitting a few streets over smoking and leaning against the White Knight. Suddenly, he had a revelation. He hopped in the car and drove like a madman toward the bar. He had just remembered how he had heard of nightlife 